what advice would you give yourself starting out your bachelor's degree, I guess, in sports science? I would definitely say be patient and reach out to guys. My experience was guys are really happy to help. It's almost like a teaching profession in some ways and guys are guys have been through it. They're happy to help. They're happy to have you in for a session. See as much as you can. And then I would say use your university and your education to learn how to think about problems rather than just copy paste stuff into your program. So see sports science and and university as a way to make sense of strength and conditioning problems and assess what's working and what's not rather than just trying to rope learn and transition a whole lot of things into every program that you do. We've discussed obviously key benefits of, of combining the S and C and integrating it with the tactical technical. Um, what would be some other benefits, I guess, from a performance point of view, particularly for athletes listening in? I think there's a couple of factors to it. There's the the obvious one, which is we're trying to improve your core work, your plyometrics, your speed, your conditioning. I always try to create a learning environment. One is that it's engaging. So I like to have my plyometric and running, drilling and core progressions based around a bit of skill. And you have a bunch of different guys in the gym and they're all on different levels of this spectrum. This guy might be more advanced in the the plyometric progressions, but this guy over here might be more advanced in the core progressions. When you've got nine or 10 levels of this and it's based around skill and execution, it starts to bleed into that autonomy because you're progressing at a rate that's specific to you, which is also leads into your confidence. And then you're constantly having them reach out of their comfort zone and achieve something. I think when it comes to your conditioning and speed drills and you start to make them grouped and small-sided games, you've got relatedness, which is a motivating factor for people um, because you've got teams playing against each other and you're executing your skills together. And these spectrums you've got for core as well, and you mentioned drilling. Um, Running yeah. drilling is pretty basic stuff that I'm sure has been touched on before. For example, it might start, uh, if you're doing like one-ones, might be starting with plate overhead and then going to plate in front and then going to halos and that kind of stuff, just increasing the the difficulty in turn and and developing that skill of of running. And when you increase it, it makes it engaging for the players as well mm-hmm. because they can see that they're progressing to something more complex. It's well proven in terms of motivational psychology that it's a motivating, it's an engaging environment to be in. I like it to be skill-based rather than just numbers-based. I mean, nice. Yeah. And you see that transfer into a game. They come out on the field and that's rewarding. With the coaches, there's like a theme for the day and it's aligned. Yeah. The program yeah. There. yeah. Top speed. We're looking for very high speed running on our GPS, high speed running meters, max speed. What are we doing in our coaching stuff? We're working on kick chase. We're working on line break support. So when we make breaks, we can score tries and we can execute our skills under that then what are we doing for our for our drilling we're doing vertical vertical focus on our drilling high speed running focus and then we might do some fast efforts to to maintain that capacity and increase capacity and then go to a drill something like this which is still kind of a block skill and it's just a passing relay race we'd call it there's a theory in learning and it's called the broaden and build theory you start really general and focus on a fine skill, then it gets a little more specific and a little more complex and then really specific and really complex. That's how I like to set the sessions up. Let's say you you put a drill together that everyone designed that didn't quite get the stimulus you're looking for from a GPS point of view and speed point of view. How would you sort of deliver that feedback? Yeah, it depends on where the group's at with everything. We've had some drills where I'll update live and say, hey, can we start this drill with a kick chase? Can we all start on halfway, kick downfield and sprint? Because we're just not getting enough high speed running. And no worries, next rep, that's what we're doing. Or we have some days where it's not happening and it's not an option. And that's totally the coach's rights to to do that you know that's and then we might have to do some mas or some different stuff to top them up at the end that's life kind of your execution days you have your learning days where okay we're going to do speed and that gives the coaches time when they're walking back from a drill to get in there and coach 
that you can do your learning on that day because it's kind of low. There's a lot of downtime, so you can do all your learning. I used to like to do contact learning on those days as well because then on the next day when we go into our conditioning or our fatiguing day, they've done their learning. 